Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Rollins. I'm a digital marketing strategist. And today we're going to be talking about how to create a one page marketing plan. So if you are interested in more marketing tips, marketing tutorials, entrepreneur tips and things like that, please make sure that you go ahead and subscribe. I've got lots more content coming your way. But today, like I said, we're going to be talking about how to create a one page marketing plan. So a lot of times when people are first getting started with their business, they feel like they need to have this long, drawn out, elaborate marketing plan. And the fact of the matter is that you just don't need all that to get started. So if you're somebody who is new to entrepreneurship, you're trying to get started, you're interested in starting your own business, definitely make sure that you watch this all the way through because I'm going to be giving you some tips, some of the tips that like really matter when it comes to putting together a quick marketing plan and getting started quickly. One thing I will say that I found um, the most successful people do is they execute and they execute fast. And if they don't know how to do it, they get somebody who does know how to do it. So you want to think about the who, not the what per se <laughs> sometimes. Um, and that may not apply to you right now, but even if you're an entrepreneur who, who is struggling to grow um, and really get your business out there, then it's time to start thinking about who can do things for you versus what do you need to learn, right? So I have my marketing planned uh, here. It's all filled out and I just want to basically share with you. I'll share, you, uh, share with you on the screen what the marketing plan looks like and you can get your own template. I created a template just for you. So you can go ahead and click on the link below in the description box and you can get signed up for that via Facebook Messenger. So let's go ahead and get started. When we are looking at this plan, you want to make sure that you're thinking about one thing above all. Well, two things really. Number one is who are you talking to? What is the person like? What's their lifestyle like? What is their personality like? And also you wanna think about what situation are they in that your product or service is going to help solve, right? What situation, what problem per se, right? Um, most people don't take the leap to get a product or a service, especially if it's not something that they really need or they don't see a need for it just yet. Most people don't take the leap and purchase or invest in that until they absolutely need it. And nine times out of 10, that, that's when it's too late, right? Um, so what we're gonna be looking at today is I'm gonna be using a girl, her name is Monica as my example. Monica is a busy mom um, and she was left alone with a child. She has no um, family. She doesn't have any help. She's overwhelmed and she just wants a good life for her baby, right? Um, and the service that I'm going to be offering in this is a clearly, this is like a hypothetical situation. It's going to be a nonprofit organization that offers, I guess you could say luxury services to women who cannot afford luxury services. So when we're talking about luxury services, um, we're talking about things like house cleaning, um, grocery shopping, a personal driver, um, free childcare, um, things like that to help out people who are like Monica, right? So let's first look at the first section. Um, it says, if you could serve one perfect customer over and over again, what traits would they have? So she's um, female, she's single, she's divorced. Um, she makes between zero to 50K a year for her income level. Education level is high school, that's all she's got. And then her political views are liberal. So first of all, we want to think about what are some of the basic traits that these people have, right? And you can see this all throughout different types of marketing um, strategies and techniques and things like that when you're looking online and anywhere else. So for example, you know, um, somebody who sells like compression socks, they're probably not going to be selling to younger people unless they have like some sort of specific medical condition, right? Somebody who sells um, something like pop sockets or fidget spinners, and these are just like random examples, or, you know, sexy phone cases, they're probably going to have like a particular market that they're marketing to versus another group who just doesn't show interest in those types of products. So that doesn't mean that in your audience, you're going to have people who are just in that target area and that's it. That's absolutely not true. You're going to find people who are going to use your products and services for various different things. And you just have to see what is the general consensus? What are people generally using it for? And that's kind of the market that you want to stick to. Now, as you start to grow, if you start to see people like branching into like another use case for your product and things like that, then that's also a marketing angle that you could take. But starting out, you just kind of want to stick with the general consensus. 
So next we have describe the problem that your perfect customer has and what makes them realize they have to find a solution before it's too late. Now, this is where you want to get into detail, okay? So it's totally fine if you make up a story here. This does not have to be a real situation. But the reason why you want to do this is because the drama and the theatrics is really what sells, right? Nobody says, like, nobody responds to eat healthy, right? It's just kind of like, well, you know, why? Why do I need to eat healthy? But if you were to tell somebody, if you don't start eating healthy today, you will die in six months. Well, they believe you probably not, but the drama is what scares people, right? The drama is what makes people think, oh, well, I have been eating five, you know, cheeseburgers a day, right? Like, what do I need to do to change this? Maybe they're right. They start kind of thinking about things, right? So you want to get, you want to really kind of use some um, dramatic language in this part here because you, you have to get people to see the picture. Again, most people are not going to purchase your product or service until they're absolutely ready and they absolutely need it. And like I said, by that time, it's typically too late. You want them to be able to see the point faster. Even if they can't, it's okay. You have to keep drilling home the point and putting yourself out there and putting your content out there. That way, when they are ready to actually invest, you're top of mind. So here's what I wrote for Monica. Monica has been single for five years. She has no extended family. The father is not involved. She's working two jobs and she can't keep up with what her child needs. She just missed the bus for the fourth time this week and it's only Wednesday, assuming that the week started on Monday. And she just got another late fee for babysitting and she's already in the hole $400. She has no idea how she's going to get caught up. She hasn't been grocery shopping for adequate food in a month and a half. So it seems like this situation is pretty dire. She's not able to take care of her, her child. She does not have any help. She doesn't have any family. She's literally got nothing, right? So in my agency's eyes, where I'm providing these luxury services for women who have a lower income, Monica is an ideal client. She's the perfect client because we know we can help her. She's showing all the signs of somebody who needs help. Um, whether, I mean, moms need help in general, but that's another story for another day <laughs> but she needs the help she's somebody who could truly benefit from the services and she's also somebody who could change her life based on the services that i would provide for her right that's another thing you want to make sure that you are paying attention to is the transformation what is the the end goal for that person how will they get there and how are you going to help them get there so the next person or the next question is where is your perfect customer going to hang out? What websites and tools do they use to find solutions? So this is where you want to go deeper than, you know, Instagram, right? Maybe they are looking through Instagram guides. You know, not a lot of people use that feature, but let's say they do use that feature. You want to make sure that you're putting out guides so that they are finding your information. Um, it could be forums. It could be Reddit. It could be Twitter, Right. You want to kind of think really um, hard about where are they going to get their information? Where are they going to find us solutions for the problems that they're having? Because they're obviously, you know, ready to solve them. So where are they going? Because you have to be there. So for Monica, she hangs out on Facebook. I'm thinking, you know, Facebook groups and whatnot, the state website, because um, you guys know every state has their I don't really know what they're called, but, you know, they have services for parents and whatnot. Um, and just people in need in general, right? So maybe she is looking on the state website. Maybe she is looking for resources there. Um, any child care websites where she can find maybe some affordable child care, care.com, local message boards, local Facebook groups, and Google. So I just actually thought of something that I didn't add here. She's probably also at the library. Monica probably doesn't even have like a computer or anything to kind of do all this stuff on. Um, so she probably is on um, or at the library very frequently too because I know a lot of people go there to just kind of use the computer and whatnot. So care.com is one that I would probably try. I'd probably try to show up there. But, um, you know, if somebody can't really afford for child care, uh, they may not be finding a solution, but they may be browsing. So you want to make sure to pay attention to things like that as well. Local message boards, definitely local Facebook groups so she can have some local support. Um, right now, Monica doesn't really have a lot of that. Um, in the form of real support, somebody showing up to her house and watching her child while she goes to work and whatnot. But she does lean on local Facebook groups to kind of help, you know, get her 
uh, back into a more positive attitude versus always being so negative because of our circumstances. And then of course, Google. Everybody goes to Google to find a uh, solution. And the thing about Google is that people ask questions. So people don't type in things like, um, you know, well, they will type in shorter key keywords, things like, you know, books for kids or, you know, but they're typing in more specifically things like the best books for kids or, you know, the best or I'll just use an example for Monica, um, the best affordable ba babysitting services in, you know, Atlanta, Georgia or wherever it is. So, um, yeah, definitely making sure that you're showing up on SEO or me for this particular example would definitely be important because Again, we want to be right there when Monica's looking for her solution. We need to be right there in some way, shape or form, whether it's an ad, whether it's a retargeting ad, whether it's um, a search um, result, um, whether it's our keywords are being pulled from our posts on social media and she's finding us that way. It's got to be some kind of way. So the next question is when your perfect customer is looking for solutions, what questions are they asking again? These are all things that people are going to be searching for. And then I'm going to give you a quick tip um, as soon as I say this. So the first question is, how can I get affordable help? How can I get cheaper babysitting? How can I save on groceries? How can I spend more time with my child when I work two jobs? So all of these things, we already know if Monica's asking these questions, these are things that are going to make her life better, right? And we offer all of these services. Oh, I forgot to mention to you guys too, the services are like at no cost, right? Again, this is a hypothetical situation so I can make up whatever example I want, but this is at no cost for Monica. Our agency would be the perfect solution for her because she doesn't have to pay for it. She gets everything that she needs. There's no cost, so it's a perfect situation for her. If you don't know what types of questions they're asking, um, Google is a great place to look. If you just type in a question in Google, the auto um, there's going to be other questions that auto populate. So that's a great source. Um, looking at your competitor's social media and then looking in the comments and even on like their YouTube videos, looking at the comments, people are going to ask certain questions and that's a great place to get some questions um, that you can answer as well. And the way you answer these questions is you answer them through your content. Okay. So on your social media, your YouTube videos, your email list, whatever it is, these are all things that you want to be putting out there so that people know that you're the go-to person for solving their issues. And you don't have to make it um, a difficult process. Let's say if you have five tips on how to get affordable um, assistance for moms, right? You can break those five. For, there's so many things you could do here. You could do one YouTube video from that one. You could do five Instagram posts on that and you could elaborate on each tip. You could do one Instagram carousel post. You could do, of course, an Instagram reel, IGTV. You can break, you can do that in one email, those five tips, and you could also break that into five different emails. So right there, that's seven, <laughs> seven ways that you can just kind of break up that piece of content um, that from that one question. Right. So don't make it difficult. Make it easy on yourself to put it out there, because the easier that you make it for yourself, the easier it's going to get done. And the chances of it getting actually done is going to be higher. So, again, all these are questions that she's asking. She wants to know the answers to. And um, these are all things that you can answer in your content so that they know that you're available for their services. And then actually, let me add to that and just say adding a call to action at the end of all of these Hey, if you're interested in or if you need help with or are you struggling with X, Y, Z, give us a call or send us an email or send us a DM, whatever you need to do, get them in communication with you so that you guys can push the conversation to them actually getting your services. OK, next thing is what would life look like for your perfect customer once you solve their problem? So. This is going to be probably one of the most important parts. We talked about the transformation very briefly earlier, but the thing about this is like your, your person has to know that they're going to come out of this. Um, it may take a while, but they need to know that when they come out of it, it's going to be good. This is another time where you want to kind of play up the theatrics in your marketing plan um, because you, you, you have to drive the point across to them. Right. And these are also things that you could use your marketing messaging. And once you start hearing like testimonials and things like that from people, 
then you can use their language to bring about more marketing messages and more marketing copy and things like that. So make sure you're paying attention to that stuff when it starts coming in. If you're really helping people get results, it will start to come in. So in my answer, I say Monica feels relieved that she's gotten help without being judged. She feels less guilty about her current circumstances. She feels motivated to do more for her child and she feels accepted. She feels understood. She can spend more time with her child. She no longer has to catch the bus because she has a personal car come and pick her up every morning. And she has daycare that is a fraction of the cost that it was before. So imagine if you're somebody like Monica and you're struggling and you are just at the bottom of the barrel, like you're not really seeing any way out. And then a service like this comes along and is able to help you get back on your feet for no cost or well, when I wrote this, it was at a cost, but I'm gonna say no cost for right now. That's gotta be an amazing feeling, overwhelming, right? Because you have to think about a lot of the um, uh, caveats that somebody or some of the hesitations that people would have when they're going into a situation like this. You know, it's like, well, why would you help me for free? Or why would you help me for cheap when you could make so much money off of me, right? That's the general consensus. Um, and the mistrust are, is just there, you know what I mean? So if she's able to actually get help, get her problem solved and develop a relationship with my agency, what does that look like? Relief, joy, just exhaling because you don't have any more worries, right? So again, be dramatic with this part. You wanna make sure that they're getting the point. And then the last thing you want to think about is why are you the best person to purchase from? What products can you offer your perfect customer to solve their problems? So my answer is we don't judge our clients and we make them feel accepted. As for products, we do a daycare that is a fraction of the cost of our local competitors, personal transportation for our clients so that they can get to work on time, housekeeping services and gro grocery shopping and meal prepping for clients. These are all things that my perfect client would be struggling with or need help with. So guess what? You're struggling with it. I'm going to go ahead and offer the service for little to no cost. And we're going to get you some help, right? We're going to help to kind of turn your life around. So I want you to grab your template, like I said, in the link down below, if you've not already, and fill this out. What you're going to do from here is going to be really important. You need to go ahead and start searching up the questions for sure that um, people are asking in your niche. You need to find a way to answer those questions, whether it's through your social media content, through an ebook, um, through a YouTube series. Really, I recommend you just doing all of that. Just make sure that you are doing your, uh, repurposing your content so you don't have to create from scratch every single time. You definitely do not wanna do that. But all of these questions that are being asked, you wanna start answering that in your content. That is the number one thing, okay? Um, so make out a plan to where you can answer these questions. And then the next thing you want to do is you need to get people on your email list. So if you are somebody who has just said, well, I just have social media, I'm not going to have an email list. It's probably because you don't want the responsibility of actually emailing your audience. And I totally get it. It could be daunting sometimes, but guess what? It needs to be done. And I'm pretty sure you've heard this before. If Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, any of these things were to shut down, you instantly lose your audience because it's not your audience. So you have to get them somewhere else where you can talk to them. Even if you don't want to do uh, emails, you could also even start like a text list. You don't have to do emails. I would recommend email in addition to a text list, but you could start with a text list right? That's something that you own and that you can keep forever. You're actually garnering those leads. You don't have to give them to anybody else or share them with anybody else. So you can also start there. Next, you want to go ahead and make sure that you are um, attracting your leads with something. So in order to get them on your email list, you need something called a lead magnet. Um, or, you know, there's, there's multiple different ways that you can do this. And I may have to do a separate video on the different types of lead magnets that you can do. But a lead magnet is basically something that you give to someone, um, in exchange for their email address. That's it. It could be a video series. It could be a quick guide. I would probably recommend starting out with a guide at first. You want to make sure that whatever you're giving people, it actually has actionable, valuable stuff in it. You don't want to give them a piece of crap. One time I signed up for a PDF and it literally was like through two or three paragraphs trying to sell me into something. And I was like, oh, hell no. Like, why did I do this? I immediately unsubscribed. 
So you don't want to do anything like that. You want to give them something that they can actually use. And then keep this in mind, like above everything else, if you're not giving people stuff that they can actually use, they're not going to come back. They're not going to come back. They're going to do exactly what I did when I just said I immediately unsubscribed. They're going to do that. So you don't want that. You want to make sure that you're giving them stuff that they can take and implement in their life. And some people say, well, I don't want to give too much away for free. Hey, guess what? I totally get it. But if they can't experience you on a free level, like if they can experience what you can do in your knowledge and your expertise on a free level, they're not going to pay. <laughs> they're not going to pay anything. So you have to give them something that they can actually use. That's it for this video. I hope that you found this helpful. This marketing plan is what is going to help you put your content out there for your social media and start to garner a base in an audience that can really use your services, not just people who like your Instagram feed and whatnot. Um, it's going to be people that can actually use your stuff. You don't want people who just like your feed. Get creative, okay? Go and look at some of your competitors or what other people are doing. See what they're doing and see what can what's missing from their content that you can provide and then go out there and create it, right? What I will say is this though, video kills. So whenever you can, do video content. Even if it's of you just answering a quick question, you wanna go ahead and make sure that you are doing some sort of video content so that you can stand out in all the algorithms, all the algorithms fever video. So that's all I have for you today. Like I said, you can grab your marketing plan template in the description box and then make sure that you subscribe if you are looking for more marketing tips, entrepreneur tips, and things like that. I am your girl when it comes to digital marketing strategy. So go ahead and get subscribed down below. Hit that like button if you found this helpful. And then I will see you next time. Bye.